So I think a lot of times we're really overthinking nutrition. And if we stick to some basic principles, we can be very successful in keeping low body fat and maximizing muscle, because I think that's what we should all strive for. And you know, having a few basic parameters, I think is sufficient here. And the first one is for me to say when you eat, right? And when you eat is hugely important. So I usually try to eat all foods within a 12 hour period. So it means I have at least a 12 hour fasting window every day. Now, this can vary a little bit. There might be days when I only eat in a 10 hour or eight hour window, but I usually do not eat for more than about 12 hours a day. So I will have at least a 12 hour fasting window. And the second thing is when I'm eating during the day, I like to have at least a three hour window between my meals. And I'm like making my meals purposely a bit bigger, especially the first meal. And I did a video about it, having a breakfast that has a very big amount of uh, protein Usually I'm starting out with about 50 grams of protein, which is really on the upper limit here. You will not be able to absorb a lot more than that, uh, but it really sets the tone for the day and it really improves satiety and several studies have shown that. So starting with a big breakfast and with a high protein content is hugely helpful in setting the tone for the whole day and decreasing cravings, especially later in the day. So that makes a big difference. So when we eat is again, one is the eating window during which we eat. And the second thing is then having distinct meals with time between meals. And most people will be able to do two hours and maybe even three hours between meals. That's about right. You don't want to get too hungry. So you want to have your meals on the slightly larger side without going way over your uh, caloric needs, of course, right? But this makes uh, a lot of sense. Now I have usually four meals a day, but one of those meals is a protein shake. And I frequently talk about this. I have at least two protein shakes a day, one with my breakfast, because that's a meal where I like to take in a lot of protein. And then the second protein shake is between my lunch and my dinner because it keeps me really full. And again, it's easier for me then to get away with a small dinner because I think that should be the goal. You start with a big meal, medium lunch, and then a small dinner. And again, having that protein shake in between works for me. Now, some people are able to do this with two meals a day and that's fine. Again, I'm, it wouldn't work for me, but for some people it does. Some people have to go with five meals a day. But as long as we stick to those basic parameters, at least about two hours between meals and eating within that time, I think that helps quite a bit. The second principle that I always follow is to prioritize protein with each meal. And I frequently talk about it. In my opinion, if you're healthy, and of course, it's not medical advice. So you can always ask your doctor, am I healthy enough to eat a high protein diet? But if you are, I would say 0.8 grams per pound per day is actually uh, what we should really strive for. And that means uh, ideal body weight. So if someone weighs 200 pounds, but the ideal body weight is 150 pounds, then of course, go with uh, the total weight being 150 pounds. For a 150 pound individual, they could consume up to 120 grams of protein per day. And I think that's absolutely fine. Again, um, it is not easy to get there. So what I usually strategically do, I have these two protein shakes. I use a whey protein that is very clean or grass fed whey. And that's all that's in there. So this one is one, one ingredient. I'm not uh, sponsored by this company, but I think that's a very good one. I add a little bit of a protein powder with a vanilla flavor and with that, because I like that. Uh, I always think you should uh, like the food you eat, otherwise you will not do this consistently. So there should be, you should at least like the foods you're eating, right? But um, this way, getting in at least about 60 grams, I actually go sometimes up to 90 grams, which is on the high end of my total protein need of the day through these shakes, um, makes it very easy. And again, there's not much else in there. So when you look at the uh, protein powder here, all it has in a 25 gram serving is 21 grams of uh, protein, uh, one gram of fat and two grams of carbs. I think that's very clean. And again, there's no other ingredients. There's no fillers. There's no other junk you don't want in there really, right? And then for other meals, again, make sure you still, you prioritize protein with each meal and then try to keep your carbs and fats on the lower side. That could be if you are not a vegetarian or vegan. And of course, we're talking about chicken beef with some of the meals. I don't eat a lot of meat, but I eat some. Um, eggs are an excellent source, of course. And if you are vegan, then uh, pea protein is really the go-to. I think I don't like soy very much, but pea protein is actually very good. Um, these are all working out. So again, make sure you meet your protein needs. Um, make sure you structure your fats and your carbs on the low side. And why is that? Well, if you think about um, the uh, calorically, the most dense food is fat, nine grams, uh, sorry, nine calories per gram of fat. Whereas carbs and protein, we're talking about uh, four calories per gram. So this is a lot less dense and it's easy to overdo the fat. I know I'm not, I have nothing against fat. I think fat is healthy to consume, especially if you're following a ketogenic diet, you can take in a certain amount of fat. But even there, I see people go overboard and just have this carte blanche and uh, guzzle down bacon and butter. 
and that might not work out. Also, again, when we're thinking about the effects of a ketogenic diet helping you with body fat, the goal is to burn your own body fat and not taking it all in externally, of course, with your food, right? But having um, low uh, goals for your fat and your carbohydrates, I think, is something that I would go for, really, right? Then, of course, the next rule would be to avoid processed foods. And that's, people say, what's processed foods? Well, anything in, in, in a package is processed foods, usually. It's anything that has seed oils and has all these other fillers and gunk in there that you don't really want, right? So in general, foods, uh, processed foods will have seed oils, trans fats, artificial sweeteners, artificial food colors, and all that kind of junk. So you want to avoid that as best you can, of course. And how do you do that? You go with single uh, ingredient foods mostly and organic if possible. Now, organic is more expensive. I don't eat a lot of fruit, but I usually buy frozen uh, blueberries and strawberries that are organic, and that helps a lot. They don't go bad. My experience is with organic fruit, it goes bad very fast, and I waste a lot of money, so I'm not doing that anymore. So I buy them frozen. I put them in my protein shake. And again, back to the protein shake I mentioned earlier. Now, when I make that protein shake, it's not just the whey protein and water. I do put in frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries, a bit of um, ground flax seeds. So this is a real meal, and it does actually fill me up. It has some fiber, has a little bit of carbs from the fruit, and then it has, of course, a lot of protein. And I also put a dash of milk in there. So again, I like to enjoy the foods I eat. I like to make them wholesome. I like to prepare them with single ingredients so that I mix myself. And that, I think that's a good goal here, right? So cutting out processed foods, cutting out your seed oils, all these things, this is a, a, a very important thing to do because you can get high protein processed foods, there's no question, but you're getting a lot of junk with that, which are really impacting your health very negatively. So I really would uh, shy away from that. And then the fourth rule I really follow to make this very simple is just to keep my carbs and fats low. Now, I always recommend initially to calculate your basal metabolic rate. So kind of what are the calories you can take in every day, you know, just to meet your current needs of energy expenditure without gaining or, or losing weight, right? And um, it's cumbersome if you do it correctly, because you really got to read your labels, ingredients and all that, you got to calculate it together. I think it's a good exercise to do once in a while. But then to make it simple, uh, and most people will not do this every day. Now, if you watch videos of bodybuilders, they do this religiously and they're very good about it. And they say, well, this has this much protein, this has this much carbs, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, that's fine. Who's got the time for that and who's got the patience for that? I mean, you know, most of us uh, can't really follow that. But if then in the future going forward, I would always say, well, what's my protein goal for the day? And let's say your protein goal is 120 grams of protein per day, right? You multiply, you multiply that by four, which gives you 480 calories, that's coming in from your protein, right? And then you can say, okay, fine, well, what else am I um, gonna take in to keep kind of below my basal metabolic rate? Because if you wanna lose body fat, if you wanna lose weight, again, keep your protein as high as possible um, within that range, within about 0 0.8 to maximum one gram of uh, um, protein per pound, not medical advice. And then, um, you know, see the rest you will fill with carbohydrates and fats. And you'll see you get there very quickly. And that's why we should keep only, uh, only allow good carbs and good fats, right? And with good fats, of, I mean, so don't have seed oils and all that junk, but you can get some fats from, let's say, you know, butter or from avocado oil, olive oil, those are absolutely fine. Even coconut oil is okay, in my opinion. And then of course, don't forget when you eat meat, there will be a certain amount of fat in that as well. So these are other things that might be um, influencing your fat content for the day. So I think it's really important to um, calculate that you know, and say, hey, okay, how can I minimize that my fat in all these meals? And uh, once you get more comfortable with that, you know, then you can really, really make some uh, adjustments there, right? In terms of carbs, also same thing, get from whole food sources, carbs from whole food sources. And, um, you know, carbs should come from things like fruit, like I mentioned, like, you know, frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries. That's usually why I get most of my carbs. Maybe a slice of bread here and there if you tolerate that. I'm not big on bread, but, you know, again, if it's something that fits within your daily caloric intake and it's something that you like to eat, I think that's fine. But I would minimize those things, right? And then for fats, again, keep them, keep them as low as possible, of course. Now, following this, again, these are just really four basic principles to really optimize your body fat and to optimize muscle gain. Because having the right amount of protein, keeping your fats low, keeping your carbs low, will really help you set the tone for um, being healthy. Because what I want my food to do is the following. I want to feel full, I don't want to be hungry. I want to enjoy my food and I want to have a lot of energy. I want to get things done. I don't want to be sleepy, tired, hungover, or feeling lousy or having other issues that come with eating uh, processed foods like joint pain and all that kind of thing. So you need to see that food nutrition is really a major part of being healthy. 
And so the goals again I have is, yes, I want to enjoy or like what I'm eating, but at the same time, I want it to be good for me, right? So I'd love to hear what kind of principles you're using to optimize your diet, what mistakes you've made, and also what rules you have in general for your diet when you go shopping, you know, like what foods do you buy, what, what, what do you avoid? So please leave a comment or question. I will definitely read those and this will greatly influence future videos. Thank you.